So today is another Tech Friday. Yay! Well, I'm happy about it. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> today we're going to go over chapter markers again, part two, and all the news that Elgato came up with for the Stream Deck. So if you have questions about chapter markers and the new OBS, please put them in the chat. Otherwise, go check out my Tech Friday video from yesterday, or check out my Tech Friday video from last week. Did I say yesterday? I meant last week. Tech Friday is on Friday. So go check last week's video, all on chapter markers and everything. And last week I had mentioned the stream up chapter marker plugin for OBS and the plugin for streamer bot. And I said the streamer bot I was waiting an update for it. Well, that update came. In fact, two updates came and it works great now in streamer bot and in OBS. So I'm gonna go over that. Uh, so these are two separate things. There's the stream up marker the stream up plugin for OBS and then there is the stream up chapter marker companion for streamer bot and really I think this is the way to go with chapter markers now the stream up thing interacts with the chapter marker feature in kind of a different way so you'll want to create a separate hotkey for the stream up chapter markers and we'll show you how to do that here in just a moment. So let's go into OBS and I'll show you the stream up plugin for it. Let me actually, let me get you the link. Okay. So first of all, talking about this plugin right here. All right. And you're going to need this for the streamer bot stuff. We're going to talk about it in a little bit because they, they work, they work together, but you need one to do the, to do the other. As you can see over here, uh, you get these two docs when, once you install the stream up chapter marker. They get the the main chapter marker window and the annotations window. And the annotation window, you can you select this and the annotation windows will open up. You need to find these. Those are way up here in your docs. Stream up chapter marker manager. Stream up chapter annotations. Just like that will get you these windows down here and as you can see every time i change scenes it it's creating a chapter marker and this previous chapter window lets me do that so if you click the settings menu you can name your chapter marker whatever you want this is for when you hit the hot key so if i i hit the chapter marker hot hot key right now i would create a a chapter name called chapter uh, show previous, add chapter trigger source. So every time I click a button to change a scene, it will let it will create a chapter marker with that name. And I have in, insert chapter markers into video file. So they're on the resulting video. And I, then I export the chapter markers to both a text file and an XML file. And then here's, here's the set chapter on scene change thing, I should say. Uh, this is what causes the demo window host thing to occur. And then you can, if you don't want a chapter marker for certain scenes, you click ignore scenes and you can set what scenes you don't want a chapter marker to appear on when you change to them. You can do that. Then if you want an annotation, all you do is come over to this box Type whatever you want in. This is the best note ever. Save annotation. And now in that text file that I have those chapter markers in, there'll be a little note calling it an annotation and saying, you know, the, the name of the annotation. Note that chapters on scene change also appear to count for studio mode. Ah. Now then, as I said, this is a different chapter marker than the chapter marker that comes with standard OBS. So you want to set up a different hotkey, go to settings, you get all this fun stuff. And you go down to hotkeys. And then 
you want add default chapter marker stream up. So if you want the stream up plugin to work and you want a hotkey with it, you can just move your mouse over to it and click it. But if you want to do it with a hotkey or set up a hotkey on your stream deck to automatically make a chapter marker, make sure your add default chapter marker is stream up. Okay, and the regular one is down here somewhere. Yeah, add chapter marker. And again, you have to be in hybrid MP4 in your settings in order to do this. And that is output recording, recording format, hybrid MP4, beta, that MP4. So if you want chapter markers to work at all, you need hybrid MP4 beta which works fantastic. You can pause the recording. You can, uh, if there's some sort of failure, you might be able to recover, just like you could do with MKV, can do with this hybrid MP4. And you also get the benefit of streamer markers, or chapter markers. So that's the stream up solution for all that. Here's their companion app that I'm using in StreamerBot. And once you unzip the, once you download the file and place it in a folder, then you unzip it. So once you unzip it, and this is version 1.0.6, that's the only one you can download. So, but there's an installation guide. If you've never used their stuff before, support and facts, way to unlock all products. And so you have two folders, download, bot install, go to the download. It just gives you a link to the chapter marker manager in OBS because you need it in order to run this. And then you go to bot install and this updater, stream up library updater.exe, you want to put that in your main streamer bot folder. And uh, this will update you on stream up products. And then you just take this and you import it into streamer bot. Ta da! Streamer bot. Look at that. So you go to import. Click it, and you drag this right into here. And you notice you get all these things coming up. Now, I already have them in here, so I'm not going to import, but these will all come in, and then we can see them all here. And then two things. This includes commands, so what you're going to want to do is turn those commands on. When you import a streamer bot action that has commands, you have to turn on the commands separately because StreamerBot turns them off. So I'd have to go to commands and then you can go to this category, Stream Up Tools, Chapter Marker Manager Companion, right click it, group, and enable or disable all. So I have them all enabled. They'll be in, they'll be in red if they're disabled actions. And so now I can do things, go into my Twitch chat and type exclamation mark, marker, I, and I've now created a marker that says hi. Oh, one, one more thing <laughs> before uh, you can actually use this is you have to make sure you have the settings on. So you click here, CMMC settings. You go to core, test right here, right click, and you say test trigger. And that will bring up that window we all saw very briefly. Hold on. Why did it go behind everything? I don't know. They'll bring up this window and OBS connection number. Your OBS connections in Streamer Bot are in a list if you have more than one Streamer Bot instance. If you just have the one, it's going to be connection number zero. So that's all. You can also send the chapter markers to Twitch VOD. So all these markers are also being recorded to the Twitch VOD if I want to use the Twitch's highlight or anything. But then you go to messages, decide. You know, if you want bot messages to be sent. And then here's just the generic things for chapters and annotations. You click the save button. You'll get a little pop-up that says, hey, we saved. You're ready to go. So once you all do that, then you can do stuff like marker and exclamation mark annotation. And now I, I have those saved to the text file that I have just made. So yeah, those are, those are real handy. I like it a lot. Uh, I have found, including the stream up stuff, I found three different ways of doing the chapter marker thing through StreamerBot. 
I think StreamUp ha has the best ideas for it. Uh, so definitely check it out. And again, if you don't use StreamerBot, please use their, use their OBS plugin. It's, it's pretty great. Plus allows annotations. It, it makes the, the chapter marker experience more robust. And so now I'll show you all the text file that we're doing right now, just to show you that it works. Here's where I did the chapter marker command in chat. Here's where I made the annotation. And if you go to your YouTube, you can copy and paste this and have, you'd probably want to get rid of the annotation ones, but uh, in your YouTube description of the video, you would have your chapter markers all set. So yeah, that's really, really handy. I like it a lot. And if you want to see what those chapter markers look like, you can go back to my previous video from last Friday and see all that. So if there's any questions about those or how those work, what they do, anything like that, please ask. Now's the time. And while questions are coming in, if there are any, I will uh, move on to the next topic, which Elgato has gifted us a bunch of stuff to talk about. And they announced a XLR dock or a USB hub that plugs into the back of the that plugs into the back of the Stream Deck Plus. And they made it the first thing on their page. I know how to do things. <laughs> so here's Elgato's main page. Go there. Uh, they're right right at the top of the page. So you can plug in an XLR mic into the back of your Stream Deck Plus, which is kind of cool. And then you'll have access to the great Wavelink software that Elgato provides if you get the Wavelink microphone or if you get the Stream Deck Plus. It's the one with the knobs. We, we often talk about how we like knobs. Or so you can plug in the XLR bit or you can use it as a USB hub and it plugs right into the back, back of the device. And they're quite neat additional features, right? I think they're both, looks like they're both, the XLR dock is 119. Oof. All right. And the USB hub is 59.99. All right. So those are the prices, but additional functionality. What I like about the USB hub thing is it also has a micro SD card slot on the side. And that to me would be very valuable as I currently don't have any sort of uh, SD card slot on my machine. So even just that, I mean, I, I already have a, a long USB plug-in thing. I, I have, you know, 10 USB ports that plug into my computer, plus the USB ports on the main machine. So I, I'm pretty well set for USB ports, but I, I, I could get an SD card reader. That might be handy. And then they updated... Elgato updated their Stream Deck plugins. So this is, I'm on my Stream Deck Plus. I, I select a blank page. But if you're just using the stock OBS chapter markers, OBS Studio, they added the ability to add a chapter marker button. I now wonder if Resolve can also export chapter markers as a text file for any manual ones or what the plugin misses. Yes. Uh, it can, though there's a uh, method which makes it like a, it's not an Excel file, it's a CSV or something like that, and that is a lot neater, and then you can just delete what you don't need and copy them down. Uh, the, the text file is a bit of a mess, uh, <laughs> but if you, if you open Google Sheets or even Excel, depending what you have, and put... Uh, because you can just save out. There's an option in Resolve to save out your... Yay, CSV are the backbone of everything. Yeah. So there, there's an option in Resolve to save out your, your chapter markers to either format you want. Yeah, OBS chapter marker, and it will automatically... You, know, you, you say what you want your chapter marker. Now this, again, does not plug in to the stream up thing. If you want to do that, you drag in a hotkey for the the stream up markers, but this, this is OBS's own stock thing. So if you don't want to use stream up and you don't want to use, or you don't want to use any other plugin, 
to manage your chapter markers. There's now one in the default OBS Studio. This is by Elgato. I, I, you notice I have OBS Toolset by Bar Raider here, but you'll want just the OBS Studio that Elgato makes for your stream deck. And you can drag it in and use it there. The other thing they did, and I haven't tried this yet, so we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do this live, is they added this thing called Action Wheel. And I drag this here, and sort of like adding, adding things to it. So drag an action from the right and drop it here. Okay, so I want to have the brightness of my stream deck. And then the next one I want is a sleep mode device on my, say on my stream deck. I want to control the sleep on my stream deck. And then when I go to the dial, you notice it's right here. I could have named it. And you see how I have two options here. I click the dial over, it goes to the sleep mode. Let me zoom in on this so you all can see it. Goes to sleep mode or I click the dial over to go over to brightness, and then when I press it, it activates, and I can control the brightness. And you can do this with just about anything. So if I wanted to add uh, my title executable into the command, I could. You, you basically can add anything that's over here. You you can add into into this action thing. So you can have multiple programs that you want open up or controls for different programs. So say I want my YouTube play button here and I want my Spotify or Tidal or whatever music service play pause button here as well. You could do that. Like I can go to YouTube and you know, start, stop, stream, viewers, chat message, just drag and there you go. It'll, it'll do the things for you. You have hotkeys set up, anything you can make. Pretty much you can drag over here and now you have a little wheel to control them. So I could say system, open and select a file. And now, you know, I can do the brightness, sleep, or I can open if I chose a file to open. Or maybe you wanna, you know, have a bunch of games and you could just create, you know, uh, open the executable, point this at the executable for that game and put a bunch of those in this dial and now you can just sort of, you know, scroll through whatever you have and you press in the button and it will, uh, you press in the knob and it will activate that, that particular game. So this is very handy, very nice way of condensing things. And it, yeah, I just, I really like this feature. Let's see, while we're at it, let me look at Resolve because I just did this the other day, getting the markers. All right, so here's DaVinci Resolve. Here's, you know, my Tech Friday from last week. You can see here I have, I have markers. You want to go to Index. Make sure Index is on, or you can shut it off. But Index, and you get this window appear, appears here. Get all these. Go here. Say, Show Markers. And if you color your markers, you know, you can show the blue markers. You can show just the cyan markers. Or you can show all. Here's all, all 18 of my markers. And you click the three dots, export, edit, index. And now it automatically exports as a CSV, or I can export it as a, as a text as well. The, the CSV is a lot cleaner. And then you can just delete the columns and rows you don't want to copy over onto, say, your YouTube video description. And, uh, paste that in and you automatically have all of your markers on your edited video just right there for you. Yay. Oh, also, this is also important for markers is that normally DaVinci Resolve here starts at one hour and you can change that in your settings because for your markers to work, you need this at zero, 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 zero. So you're going to go to, let's see here, it was file. No, it was... Yeah, DaVinci Resolve, Preferences, and then you have to go over to User, click on Editing, and then the Start Time Code, just make it 0000. zero, zero. There'll, there'll be a 1 in here, get rid of it, just make it all zeros, 
And that way, if you use DaVinci Resolve, your chapter markers will line up just fine. And then you click Save, and then all of your projects that you open from now on will start at the 000 timeline. And thank you all so much for being here. Please be kind to yourself, be kind to others. And I will see you on Monday for a talk about what I bring to conventions. Yeah. See you then. Have a great weekend.